Give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. Ever since her debut at the end of Season 2, Princess Cadence has been my number one favorite character in Friendship is Magic. I love everything about her. I love her nurturing nature to Twilight. I love her grounded and banter-driven marriage of Shining Armor. I love how the biggest issue for her is boredom. I love her precious Babu. I love how goddamn pink she is. Like, holy bubblegum explosion, that's a lot of pink. But for some reason, Cadence remains a contentious character for a lot of people, and has been ever since she first appeared in a Canterlot wedding seven years ago. Cadence is probably the most weirdly received character in the world. She gets a ton of hand-wringing and phony criticism despite being a relatively neutrally designed character, and it seems a lot of bronies consider her to be a poorly written and problematic character that presents bad lessons to children and poisons the very show with her presence. And that's pretty laughable when you consider the fandom's latest roster of best characters ever. Where does this sentiment come from? Well, my children, it comes from the same place that all bad takes about Friendship is Magic come from. There's been something of a contradictory sentiment pushed around about Princess Cadence for quite some time, particularly that Cadence is too perfect. Of course, saying that a character is too perfect is another one of those sentiments that sounds accurate until you start thinking about it for a few seconds. Sure, when compared to Celestia, Luna, and Twilight, Cadence looks like just the most perfect little princess doing the usual perfect little princess things. However, when divorced from the other princesses, and there's a sentence that inspires a thousand fanfics, Cadence is a relatively normal adult. She's arguably the most normal, grounded character the show has. She only seems perfect when compared to the other princesses because the other princesses are all a collapsing mess. You put anyone next to Luna or Twilight and they'll compare favorably and the writers often exploit that to push their favorite waifu in your face. But Cadence herself just isn't all that special. She's a normal, well-adjusted adult with a job and a family and the biggest concern in her life being that life in the Crystal Empire is sometimes dull. Cadence is what a normal adult looks like and what normal adults need to be able to be in order to function. Cadence's role in the story of most episodes she appears in is to give Twilight something she often needs that she can't get anywhere else. Direct, simple, down-to-earth advice. Besides, I have to make sure these cruise ponies are happy if I want to be a good princess. You're already a good princess, Twilight. Cadence is an example of a character arc that has been completed before her introduction. She has no room left to grow beyond minor personality tweaks. She exists to be a mentor to Twilight, someone Twilight can go to when she needs real down-to-earth advice. Additionally, the complaints about Cadence being too perfect are laughable now that Starlight is a member of the cast and has been mandated to hog the spotlight as the writers opt to just psychologically pummel people into thinking she's a good character. The complaints about Cadence being too perfect are actually that she isn't written like a main character, and there's a reason she's not written like a main character. She isn't one. You remember what I said in Apex Predator, where characters are designed with their specific roles in mind, and as a result, their designs can often be strictly utilitarian? Cadence is a prime example of this, because she's cast as an Obi-Wan to Twilight, and used mostly as a vector for Twilight to have an epiphany, often without Celestia's obfuscating bullshit getting in the way. This mentor characterization inevitably means that Cadence is the prime candidate for a marketing push. I mean, if Hasbro wanted to sell a new baby toy, they'd need to make that a character in the show, which means somebody has to become a mother, and Hasbro also wants it to be a princess, so it has to be one of the four alicorns. In that position, Cadence is the only character you can do that with because she's the most well-adjusted and responsible. You can't make any of the other three princesses a mother without running into severe issues the moment a dependent becomes introduced. Twilight's scatterbrained characterization and her own character voice being supplanted in favor of being the vector for the writers to push their heavy-handed and terrible ideas has become so egregious over the years that even a lot of fan works that deal in next-gen applications seem to grasp that Twilight would be an irresponsible parent at best and criminally negative negligent at worst. And a flurry of emotions, while cute, was a big display of why Twilight shouldn't be allowed to have custody of children. Celestia gets kidnapped and incapacitated too much to reliably raise a child, and Luna might strangle it. Cadence is about the only person that any reasonable, level-headed social worker would even consider allowing to raise a child in the first place. And speaking of flurry art brings us to the inevitable whining about toy sales. You see, when Cadence was first announced as an alicorn because princesses sell well, the community had the floodgates opened to bitch about alicorns. The increasing 
pissing and moaning about alicorns has been some of the most nakedly obvious whining for the sake of whining I've ever seen. At first, we all thought that alicorns were special godlike beings. We were wrong. Then we thought you could only become an alicorn by earning the right to be one. We were again wrong. Not only are alicorns not that much stronger than a skilled unicorn, but they can be both naturally born and artificially bestowed. A simple concept that any sensible person would understand, right? Yeah, of course not. When Cadence and Twilight became alicorns, the community bitched incessantly about how it was making the princesses less special by not being a natural birth. And then when Flurryheart was born, the community bitched incessantly about how you had to earn it. Despite Twilight being the only one of the five to actually do so, Cadence has a story in one of the tie-in books, but they're tie-in books, so they don't matter and will likely never be built upon in the show. And lastly, we have Cadence's relationship with Shining Armor, currently one of the most stable, lol, stable, relationships in the series, possibly only outclassed by the cakes. Ever since a Canterlot wedding, Cadence and Shining's relationship has been nitpicked incessantly for being too much of a cliche 2000s Disney relationship between two people who have been friends for their entire lives and end up having a fairy tale wedding. But then the perfect pair came out and people suddenly decided that was a good thing, so I guess we don't need to defend it. I've said it before and I'll say it again, if the perfect pair hadn't confirmed the AJ's parents are dead head canon, nobody would be declaring this to be such an amazing episode. Interestingly enough, Cadence and Shining Armor demonstrate why such a story idea doesn't play out very well by simply moving forward. Where Bright Mac and Pear Butter get married and the story ends, Cadence and Shining Armor get married the same episode they're introduced, and as a result, their relationship moving on from there is a lot more engaging because we've moved past all the parts where the romantic subplot cliches can even be applied. Cadence and Shining have episodes where they have a night out away from Flurryheart to visit the greatest character ever, take a vacation with the family and needle Shining for being airsick, or endlessly torture Pinkie Pie. All things that say, yeah, they've been married for seven years years? When people look at these two and declare them boring and cliche, and then look at these two and declare them an amazing pair with the best episode and the best song, it's obvious that all of the complaints about Cadence and Shining's relationship are manufactured to continue stroking the wah alicorns grudge. Let's circle back for a second. You know how I said that Cadence is written like a mentor and not a main character, and how it related to the dadlings being written to fit the role they were cast in? This is something that the fandom, by and large, just refuses to accept. They expect, nay, demand, that every single character have a fully fleshed out three-dimensional personality complete with flaws and quirks and a backstory for good measure. For a cast as large as Friendship is Magic, this is damn near impossible, and it's only the main six plus Spike that actually has that. No other character has that level of characterization because no other character was written to fill that role. Not even the CMC has that level of characterization despite almost being a second main cast on their own. The fandom doesn't accept this reality of character design because they are convinced that the show needs to focus more on the world and move away from what they derisively call the main six click to turn the show into a world crossing sandbox narrative where literally every character has a fully fleshed out design and is capable of taking the reins of main character at any moment. This is something that very few shows even try to do and which no show successfully does. Every series has a main cast, supporting characters, background characters, and bit roles. And yet for some reason, the brony fandom gets really fucking pissy when the show doesn't do a complete 180 to flesh out a supporting character the way they do Fluttershy. This is what leads to pathetic pseudo intellectual warbling about how Cadence is supposedly a lesser character because she isn't the same kind of character as Twilight. But in reality, Cadence has the same amount of development and personality as Trixie, Maud, Discord, and Thorax, and those are all fan favorites. Hell, if you want to talk about characters who are in desperate need of more development to fit the role they're put in, both Celestia and Starlight have zero development to them despite repeated attempts by Hasbro to force them into the spotlight. I'm thoroughly convinced that the continued complaining about Cadence comes down to one thing. Bronies view Cadence as a representation of the reality that Friendship is Magic exists as a commercial to sell toys. The fact that she's an alicorn, a princess, debuted with a wedding, was the vector to introduce the Crystal Empire and all the new Crystal Ponies, and got a baby a few seasons later, Cadence has arguably been involved in more blatant and obvious toy commercials than any other character, and this is something bronies have by and large refused to let go. The toy sales don't bother me because this has been a reality of everything Hasbro has produced since Reagan-era deregulation, and there's a strong argument to be made that the commercials tend to be better than the actual stories. A blatant push for toy sales gave us the best villain in the series, one of the best two-parters in the series, the entire Equestria Girls franchise, which the vast majority of the fandom warmed up to and many people find more interesting than the show proper, and the best and most precious Babu. Honestly, it's when the show stops being a toy commercial that it starts to veer off the rails and create shit like Newbie Dash and Shadow Play. I refuse to accept the premise that Cadence is somehow problematic and troubling while literal psychopaths are being championed as wonderful new characters by the very same people. Also, she's the best mummy in the whole world and you can all eat my entire Tire butt. Oh hey, speaking of precious babos, repent your sins and bow to bubblegum mom.